All right, suit up and welcome to Dual Redundancy, where you can hear all the latest in television and entertainment news that you'll think long and hard. That's what she said. I'm one of those hosts, David Allen, and another one is... John Berwick, and a third one is... Kyle Bridger. Uh, I would say that I am the Barney Stinson to John's Ted Mosby, and you can be Michael Scott. All right, I'll take Michael Scott. Uh, a buffoon? Hey, a buffoon? he was a great manager, actually. Somehow his, his branch was always number one. David Wallace had no idea how he did it. His management <laughs> style, hey, somehow I manage. That's his name of his <laughs> memoir. <laughs> and yeah, uh, man, tonight's going to be a legend. Wait for it. Keep waiting. Hopefully it'll be Dairy Podcast, a legendary podcast. We're going to be talking about two sitcoms here uh no box office draft this year because there's no box office <laughs> this summer so nope. instead tonight we would have done the box office draft but instead we're going to look at shows celebrating their 15 year anniversaries there's a bunch this year Grey's anatomy it's always sunny philadelphia but the two we're going to be talking about tonight the office and how i met your mother but before we get there we got some other stuff to do first and john I don't remember what it is. Uh, what is it? In and out points. In or out. In out. In out. In out. Yes, yes, it is. It is in and out points. Coronavirus. All right, here we go. Every week. Who would have uh, guessed that? Who would have guessed? Now, here. This is also another one that who would have guessed. But the digital piracy research firm Muzo calculated that film piracy has increased by over 40% when the lockdown measures were enforced. They described this rise as, quote, unprecedented. Uh, Italy and Spain were two European countries that were some of the worst affected with piracy. And they also went into an earlier lockdown. They saw the highest increases, uh, 66 and 50%, respectively. Uh, is this one of those? Yeah, we know. Like, what, what do you guys think, Kyle? Yeah, I mean, I would fully expect this from from people. Um, yeah, I'm not surprised at all. I mean, people want to get their content, and they don't want to subscribe to eighty thousand uh, subscription services to get it. So, uh, it makes sense to me. Um, I am still stuck in like 1800. So I still pay for everything that I, I never illegally download, but um, it, it don't uh, ISP and like internet service providers. They, they, um, they cut down on that though. Don't they, they can tell if you're like downloading a bunch of stuff and then cut back on your, your Wi-Fi. John, I think usually true? what ends up happening is the companies who own the content, so for uh for example um xyz the 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 uh the company will say you know hey verizon this person that uh, we suspect this ip has been downloading our thing here's the evidence blah 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 mm -hmm. and then each isp has their own usually has their own set of rules whether it's a warning or limitations or cutting or, or all those things so yeah yeah i've heard of somebody getting like either something in the mail kind of like a bill being like please stop downloading illegal content Yikes, or content gotta... illegally and stuff like that. Is this in incognito mode as well? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, this will, oh, that will not no. save you, unfortunately. Uh, but man, I mean, I get, I get it as well. The, the piracy, of course, is going to be on the rise. People are home. They want to watch their stuff. And there is so much, so many services to subscribe to. What I do find interesting, though, is many networks, I saw like AMC, even HBO, they released a lot of their content uh, behind their paywall for free. HBO made over 500 hours of premium content free for a month. Got Sopranos, Veep, Succession, a bunch of Warner Brothers movies. Um, I think it was like 30 days of Shudder you could get for free. That's like a, a scary movie uh, mm -hmm. streaming service. And then even with YouTube TV, I got a month of epics, a bunch of movies and TV shows on there as well. So they... they a lot of these companies gave out free stuff, but no, mm -hmm. wasn't enough for people. I still got a unpre unprecedented numbers of piracy rose during this time period still. 
I guess because people, it's still the same thing. You got to give over, hand over your contact information or sign up for this or that in order to get the free content, right? So I think people are probably thinking I'd rather just download it from a site that I know I'm probably going to get all right service or all right connection and then just download it and, you know, away they go. Away they go. But also another thing with like um, piracy is like, I also, when I'm watching, if it's a movie, I want to see it in like good quality. I don't yeah. want to have to be like somebody's like going across like a video. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't you want don't that. You know what the Cosmo Kramer Seinfeld episode where he became <laughs> a pirate and he's just like moving yeah. around the camcorder, no, no. coughing, you know, uh, snacking yeah. on his popcorn. No, no, you don't want that. No, that's not ideal. No, yeah, I hear you. And uh, yeah, you want the best quality you can. You want it for the cheapest price. And this one streaming service, which is, involves our next in and out point, they're trying to give it away. Uh, the 90 day free trial, we talked about it when it came to Quibi in episode 288. They're trying, just anybody, just watch Quibi, just watch it. It's free. Uh, we've reviewed some of their programs. It's the new streaming service uh, delivering quick bites. Well, there's also a podcast uh, that was devoted to Quibi called Quibiverse. It's a brand new podcast with over 17 episodes and counting. Uh, it was created to discuss the content offered by the streamer. Well, unfortunately, the creators actually received a cease and desist letter from Quibi. Uh, Danielle what? Gibson uh, quoted here saying, uh, she's one of the uh, podcasters of uh, Quibiverse. Uh, quote, they were like, well, you can use the name Quibi. You can't tell anyone that you're about Quibi. You can talk about Quibi, but no one can know through your title. And you can't have artwork that resembles our stuff. It just felt so surreal to get a cease and desist from a billion dollar company about our fan podcast in the midst of a global health crisis. So uh, are we in trouble? Are we in trouble, Kyle? We did talk about Quibi. We use their <laughs> logo and our logo. Uh, we can we can say bad things about them. We just can't name our podcast. Oh, uh, okay. Dual okay. Quibi. Yeah. <laughs> Dual Quibi. <laughs> oh my God, who would want that anyways? Um, uh, interesting. I mean, I I don't know. I guess it's like any other corporate thing. You get. I guess you gotta give credit where it's due or pay pay to like, use I mean, the, the, pay to use the the thing they're i don't giving know. credit i guess i mean quibi's in the title it, it's funny cuz yeah it's like it's like this reminds me of like a like fight club here it's like uh, one of the rules about fight club is you can't talk about fight club <laughs> you can talk about quibi but you can't use the name quibi yeah <laughs> or it's, use the artwork from quibi it's weird cuz you'd think with all the press they're getting about it being not spectacular that they're one their one hero who's there to try and track the good things and, and promote it, they would not like maybe set up an interview with somebody to get them on the show for them or or promote them a little bit and be like, hey, you know, uh, uh, talk to these guys, tell them how much you like X Y Z show. But no, it's just like stop, you can't do that. I it's guess just so the, weird. I guess the thing is is if you have somebody rogue that by chance that this this podcast blows up like this quibi podcast blows up and everybody was listening to it there's an assumption that if you use the name that you're affiliated with that service and then if you start talking smack or about certain things um then it <laughs> then it gets to be a problem and then people think that's a, that you're like associated with it. it'd be yeah, like me true. yeah me like i don't know using some like sports team that i hate their logo calling my and then using the podcast and calling it that and then it blows up and i'm like the bulls suck blah 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 you know it's i so i understand i understand the idea and quibi has to um protect their copyright in order to keep it um it's just uh it seems like a silly thing to do when they when you feel like they would be begging for the attention yeah, they, they need the press they need the press right now uh so this app yeah is a it's a nearly two billion dollar funded app uh we talked about only 1.7 million downloads 
even with a free trial the first week. Uh, in week two, uh, there was only 250 new reviews in the App Store, and it actually dropped the score because there's been some negative reaction to it. It was a 4.5. Now it's a 3.6, and it, oh, it's boy. going lower. Uh, um, and I saw this one article from Vulture. Uh, just the headline for it was, yeah, Quibi is bad. Like that was it. That's not a good review. Yeah. They're, you know, just pretty much straight out Quibi is bad. So any press I feel like should be good press, uh, reviewing the content, you know, just, just getting the name out there. What is Quibi? I'm sure a lot of people on the street would be like, first of all, what are you doing on the street? Get away from me. It's, 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 <laughs> but also what, what's Quibi? I, I don't understand what Quibi is. Yeah. Um, but the podcast is going to change their name. The podcast is now called Streamiverse, and its objective, switching from a largely complimentary show to the podcast, uh, Gibson is now saying that they're going to be strictly about spite and revenge. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus. She added that we consider ourselves the Joe Exotic to their Carol Baskin. <laughs> I don't know if that's the best. Nobody's really innocent in that whole story. Yeah. So I don't know if you want that comparison. But uh, yeah, they they open. It's the La- Latte Larrys. Uh, it's a spite yeah. podcast now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I love uh, it. I mean, um, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I yeah. I don't know. Yeah, a lot of people are are annoyed with Quibi right now. We talked about those negative reviews. I saw people were making fun of some of the content that has come out in the in the last few weeks, which is hard to do because you can't record or screenshot any of their programs from the app. So people are finding creative ways to just try to get that stuff off of the app and show it on Twitter and on Reddit. Uh-huh. Uh, so you got to know it's really bad if people are working that hard yeah. to, to show it. And uh, one of the things they did update from when we talked about it on the podcast is they are working hard to uh, make it being able to play on a on a TV console. But uh, still, but still, it, they're bi- well. First off, they came on. out at a terrible time, and secondly, <laughs> like they're they're uh, the way the stories are structured are not meant for aren't catered to that specific thing that they're trying to sell they're they're grasping at straws it's like that you know oh this is mobile only this is all this is it's like well you got 1.7 million people signed up for it in your free trial okay uh what about this let's you know let's change up the the game here i I don't get they're working hard to be able to do it on the tv that's something that's built into the device by default. They turned it off. How is it working hard? They, what, maybe they have to rewrite contracts, but like yeah, they deleted the, that. They purposely HTML blocked got- it. It would be it would be difficult. They probably invested money into making it so it wouldn't do any of that. Well, oh, that's, that that kind of imagine? thing just makes me like not happy because it's literally. It's like you're shooting yourself in the foot and then being like, oh, we're trying to get to the doctor, but I can't walk there because someone <laughs> shot me in the foot. It's like, no. <laughs> Whenever something like this happens, when there's like <sighs> corporate just stuff yeah. goes down the drain, I just think of the poor bastard that they come to him and they're like, Bill, I know you've been working really hard to make this so it won't go on a TV, Change but now we <laughs> need you to... <laughs> We need you to reverse course and and then Bill just be like, oh god. It's like why? the guy in like office space, the manager. Yeah, also we're gonna need you to come on Saturday <laughs> yeah. on this one. And you know, it's just like it's it's like uh, I just thought of this, which is not a great thought to even have, but like <laughs> the the cats movie, and there was those yeah. video effects editors that were told to add in the the behinds of a lot of cats. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then they're like really and then they were told at like last minute no yeah get rid of those get rid of those we don't want that too much that's like so they're having to sit there zooming in digitally adding in and removing it's like they're like thinking to myself what is my life what am i doing i went to college, went to for, college this? for this like, <laughs> okay oh man oh well my god one last and i'll point to talk about uh, involves streaming. Everyone's streaming right now. Uh, Netflix saw 15.7 million uh, subscribers in the first three months of 2020, uh, nearly double from the same point last year. And it's a record for the streamer. Obviously, everyone's inside with the quarantine. 
It's now up to over 182.8 million worldwide subscribers for Netflix. That's a lot of people. And Entertainment Weekly saw this petition, of course, on change.org, our favorite site, with an argument for streaming services like Netflix. They said, quote, make streaming media services free to encourage people to stay home during a quarantine. This change.org petition currently has over 83,000 signatures and is growing. Kyle, what do you think? You're going to sign this one? Uh, no, I, I don't. I mean, I think Netflix is entitled to, I mean, dude, the fact that we're talking about a streaming service being like an essential service yeah. when back in the day, people in like 1800s were just sitting there with like a book, like, mm, I don't know what to do, you know? So it's just like, find some other ways. And I know Netflix is, especially for educational tools and stuff like that, they're making stuff free. Yeah. They're making certain content free to watch. And if you want to watch Office for the 85th time, I think you can pony up $7 a month or whatever it is now, they gave $14. You, they gave you how many years worth of Netflix and that stimulus check. Just go use that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like, yeah, but yeah, it's an essential need at this point. Bread, milk, and Netflix. Those are your, like, it, it's the, the bare essentials. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they argue that social distancing and quarantine, quote, runs the risk of boredom and isolation which can lead to depression. Many people cannot afford these membership fees, especially in a time like now when many people's economic livelihood is already strained. Therefore, this petition asks that all worldwide streaming services enact a temporary 60-day stoppage of membership charges as well as per-movie rental fees. So they want free movie rentals as well. Uh, let's quote, if people can watch as much as they want, Whenever they want, this will help alleviate the stress of home isolation as well as encourage people to stay home. Yeah, but what about the stress on the network infrastructure? It's going to go down and no one's going to have any Netflix, so. Yeah, there's gonna, yeah the internet's going to go down. Netflix not going to have any money and then they won't have anything to show. Uh, I mean, I get it. Okay, t times are tough right now, but it's like there's so many other options. And, Read a book. You know, it's the the economy they need money <laughs> like this is a business it's like well you know grocery stores they should also probably i don't know it's, it's a crisis just give out free food to everyone <laughs> you know yeah. uh electricity yeah that, that should be free everything should be free for the next three months why not <laughs> like yeah yeah it's uh man it's just insane to think about didn't they uh talk about net netflix using too much bandwidth as yeah. it was yeah, yeah uh, we're talking overseas, about that last yeah. week or two weeks ago. Also, there is a ton of content. If you need to just sit there, go on YouTube. Just put YouTube on, yeah, <laughs> yeah and let YouTube. it filter through videos for you. That yeah. autoplay feature is not bad for getting good stuff, like <laughs> or the recommended. Yeah. Excuse me, you know, like just sit down, look up like four or five things that you're interested yeah. in, and you're gonna find too many videos to watch. Yeah. There's 290 podcast episodes on YouTube that you can sit through and watch. <laughs> Do and see. There you go. Um, yeah, there is so much free content. I mean, there's free streaming services like Pluto TV, Crackle, Tubi TV. Plus, you have free like ebooks and audiobooks. Are we forgetting about the library? There's mm -hmm. apps like Simply E and, and Libby that you can get all these free books and audiobooks. And then there's Hoopla and Canopy. They offer award-winning and popular films and shows and that's also through a library app as well so there's plenty of stuff so oh you, you can't watch stranger things i'm, I'm sorry <laughs> like, <laughs> you know yeah, that that's that's just absurd yeah. that's just absurd I, I i am i am worried though when this when because you know we it's it's been march during this quarantine okay it's kind of not the greatest weather Man, this nice weather hits. I already saw the crowded parks in New York City photos on Twitter over the weekend. People sitting in clumps without any masks on. And that's when it was like 60 degrees. So God knows what's going to happen. Yeah, dude. In, in June. We're, we're, maybe Netflix really should. You know what? We'll pay you to stay home and watch Netflix at this point. You know what's going to happen? They're going to be Netflix on the beach illegally with their yeah. downloaded versions. Yeah. Yeah, and getting it yeah. for free yeah 
Well, one of those shows on Netflix, it's so huge. It continues to be during this quarantine. It's number three after Ozark and Tiger King for the first week of April, and that is The Office. We're going to spend a, quite a bit of time talking about it tonight. In order to do it, we do have to go back 15 years. So, guys, let's go back. Back in time. We're I'm back, back baby. Gotta get back in time. You know when an athlete talks about hitting their flow? I'm ar- nope, I'm already out. I'm already no, out. <laughs> I am like so in on this. I know exactly. The music is slowing down. I know exactly <laughs> when to hit it now. All right, we can no, never go back to close. Skype now, right? I was going to say. <laughs> All right. We're talking about The Office. It premiered March 24th, 2005. The Office is a mockumentary sitcom that depicts the everyday lives of office employees at the Scranton branch of the Dunder Mifflin Paper Company. It was developed by Greg Daniels and is based on the BBC series, and it ran for 201 episodes through May 2013. It won five primetime Emmy Awards, including Outstanding Comedy Series in 2006, and we're spending our night tonight talking about it. I want to start off with John. Just give me your overall thoughts on The Office. Were you a fan? Were you into it? You, you, you've you seen it a bunch. What? What's going on? Yeah, I think I kind of started watching it maybe a quarter of the way, halfway through its life. And then, you know, from there, I kind of watched it um, after that. But, um, yeah, it, it was good. I, I, um, I am definitely 100% not somebody who rewatches shows, and, and I, I really haven't rewatched this. Um. I've seen one episode since I saw the finale, and it was today just to freshen up. But I which episode I don't know. was it? It was the that's fun run episode. Fun run, that's a good episode. Yeah, that's, that's, good that's I, if I was gonna choose one, you know. But um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really a a, a rewatcher, so I I, I kind of don't get how people sit down and just put an episode on and just let it go. You know what I mean? Because I feel like if I'm watching something. I want to watch something new, but yeah, um, other than that, exactly the same way. I thought it was a good show. I mean, I, I definitely noticed over the course of its lifetime an evolution of the characters. Um, but yeah, I, I, overall, it definitely would be a recommended watch. Um, you know, if you haven't seen it. All right, Kyle knows that. Uh, just recently, I kind of just put on a, an Office rewatch. It was my background show. I, I definitely saw it. I, you know, we we're talking about piracy earlier back in high school. I didn't have NBC and I found this site that was like freeoffice.com or whatever the, the title was. And I binged it. That was an early Netflix binge. And I would be sitting at a computer and my grandparents just like watching it, just sitting there. I got really into it. And then I actually caught up and started watching it live. And now it's kind of my go to background show because I've seen it so much. I can not have to be focused in on it. But Kyle's been at the apartment watching it with me for a bit. So, Kyle, what are your thoughts on The Office and the rewatchability of it? Well, I I do enjoy watching it when somebody else has it on. Like, if it's on somewhere, it's always, like, a fun watch. But I don't actively search The Office out. Um, I will say most of my knowledge in The Office is probably the first four five seasons after that i kind of dropped off because i think that's about when i started going to college and i like i don't know i just lost track of it kind of thing um but the first four or five seasons to me are are like so so good and it's so much fun to watch and like i like re-watching it now because i'll be like oh i think i missed that joke or i forgot about that joke and then it's hilarious to see again uh, and just some of the ideas that they came up with for the the scripts is good. Yeah, no, definitely. The first few seasons are are gold. I mean, I think it won the one of their their Emmys for season two, I believe. Mm. And that's I think one probably their their knockout season. I mean, they're just mm. every episode is just home runs in that mm. second season. You had that first season where it was like the six episodes. They were too close, I feel like, to the the British series. Michael Scott was a little bit meaner didn't mm-hmm. really have the heart yet and then once they kind of figured out the characters and they figured out the show and kind of became its own thing season two i think it really mm-hmm. took off yeah. um we'll, we'll look at tonight at some of our favorite moments episodes characters and stuff like that 
maybe I'll, I'll you know, I, I heard, John, you love the fun run. Kyle, do you have a favorite episode or moment from the show? I, mean, I know there's I, so much, but. I've written down a bunch, but the the Yankee Swap yeah. is probably one of the one of the better ones. Uh, I mean, just anything with like Michael Scott and the memes that come from like, like, uh, like uh, I just was talking to somebody about the, um, the, <laughs> the meme where it's like, I've been the victim of a hate crime instead of like, that's not a, he's like, well, I hate it. <laughs> Yeah, there's so many memes from Michael. I declare bankruptcy. bankruptcy. It's like, you, know, you can't just you know say you, you're bankrupt. He's like, no, I, I declared it. Like, <laughs> he's just he's he's perfect. I, Michael, yep. I love Michael. Probably my mm -hmm. like moment. You know, um, well, I love the like this like stress relief cold open where Dwight is teaching them fire safety. I think that's probably the best like cold open. Mm -hmm. That was the cold open after the Super Bowl episode that they did. The best my, my moment has to be Prison Mike. Uh, yeah. Again, I think I got that on like a, a DVD at that point from the library, and I recorded it from my digital camera just to rewatch it before YouTube or before it was popular. That moment, I replayed that scene. It's just the everyone because anytime you get the cast in the conference room when they're yeah. all together yeah. firing back and forth mm -hmm. with Michael leading the charge, it's gold. Every every yeah. line the, the timing everything is perfect yeah in that scene and that's another reason why i think one of my episodes i actually like is while it is cringy uh maybe dinner party because you got the whole cast mm -hmm. they all go over um michael finally tricks uh jim into you know going over to dinner to their house yep. and you got the stuff with jan you got the plasma tv that's like mm -hmm. this big on the wall <laughs> the whole thing with hunter and his songs it's there's there's just so much there with that. Uh, mm -hmm. Kyle, do you have a, a favorite uh specific episode or um I have a few written down. I have the convict written down yeah. as a um diversity day is a classic yeah. for me. Um the fun run is a good one. The one um the Dwight marijuana episode, I can't remember yeah. the name of it, but that's a good one. And then uh, the beach games too. That's beach a good games one. is a great episode. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, again, yeah. Anytime you get all of them together, just just as a group mm -hmm. together. But uh -huh. those are my those are, I think my tops. And then the the Yankee Swap, the Christmas. I was gonna say I want to get some thoughts on the controversial. Everyone talks about it. You see the memes on Twitter. Scott's tots. Everyone is one of the most cringiest. Uh, episodes. I don't, you guys remember what Scott's I Tots is? You're gonna have to remind me of that. So, one. so back in the day, uh, uh, I, I I don't know the specifics on because it, it is a one a hard, a hard one to rewatch. Uh, Michael Scott promised a group, I think, of like of kindergartners that uh, when you graduate, your your college scholarship is all set. I got you know because he's expecting to be rich and successful by that. Uh -huh. So then that moment finally comes and you can hear Stanley <laughs> laughing. It's like, oh, already? <laughs> like it's so they he goes to the school and they're all like cheering. They're all wearing the shirts. You know, Michael Scott, you know, like they're all like yeah. cheering for him, doing a big show. And obviously he doesn't have the money to pay for the college scholarships. Uh -huh. So it's just like the most cringiest thing is that him having to like break to this school of students that, yeah, you're you're on your own. Oh man. But you oh, have that storyline. Everyone always talks about that storyline. But then you also have this thing with like Dwight arranging this fake employee of the month contest to get Jim fired. So they're like both storylines are just pretty cruel. <laughs> like, uh -huh. So it's a hard one. It's really cringe to the max. What I feel season like. is that? Uh, I want to say it has to be five or six. Season I don't know if I've six. seen that one. I don't know if I've seen that episode. Yeah. Well, if you want to be tortured. <laughs> Why? Like, is it? Um, is it just cringy funny or just cringy where it's just like oh god i mean to each of their own i mean it is it's definitely cringy it's definitely tough to sit through for for some of it because it's <laughs> it's it's it, his heart's in the good place when he said that promise but <laughs> obviously uh, like there's like a moment where he's talking about the the he's like well, okay, you can't go to college, but you know there's a lot of affordable options like you can do your classes online and that's impossible without a computer but your computer can't be powered 
without a battery and he takes out free batteries that's all he has to give them it's just oh like, my god yeah i don't know i don't remember that episode i'm gonna have to watch that yeah oh all right gosh. um let's talk about jim and dwight real quick uh any favorite mm. jim and dwight pranks mm. that they did uh john any stick out to you no i no nothing really there were a lot of them were good i i just i can't think of any specific without really going back to rewatch i guess yeah. What about uh, you, Kyle? Um, my favorite, because I was rewatching some today, uh, Asian Jim is a good yeah. one. Mm, Asian good Jim one. is it, it just, it's just so absurd. Uh uh John Krasinski's impression of do, doing Dwight, yeah. that's a good one. And then him in the in the uh when they stuff his desk in the in the bathroom. Oh yeah, yep. That's a good one. Because uh, I like how, like, at a certain point, like, he's always mad about it, mm-hmm. but then he always, likes, like, goes along with it, Dwight. He always yeah. is like, all right, I guess I have to go and do this. And um, what, what, Speaking of, one of my moments, I pulled the clip from it, is a training exercise that Michael, Dwight, and Jim yeah. are involved in. And I have a clip from it because everyone takes it so seriously. Jim is just being an it, like, just being a, a yeah, just play the clip. Just play the clip. Okay, as I was saying, right now yeah, we are yeah, having... talk louder. Okay, our prices have never been lower. Son, you have Sir, to talk louder. Never been lower. Louder, I... son! Buttlicker! Our prices have never been lower! Okay, stop it. Heat! That is totally inappropriate. You never yell at the client. You now never you listen to me, client. sir. Here we go. The three words I would describe you as is aggressive, yes. hostile, and definitely difficult. Please, phone. Mr. Butler. I'm irate right give now. Me the phone. Please give me He's another irate. chance. Give me the phone. Mr. Butler. Give me the phone. I have to put you on with my boss. Well, I should hope so. Who is this? Hello, this is Michael Scott, regional manager. Well, this is William M. Butler. Hello, Mr. Butler. How may we help you? Michael, I like the sound of your voice. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy $1 million worth of paper products today. <laughs> See how it's done? Thank you very much, sir. I don't think you'll regret it. You are the master. There is one condition, Michael. Yes. You have to fire the salesman that treated me so terribly. Don't do it, Michael. It's a million dollar sale. I just love it. He's just, they, they go with it, and he's just like, Michael, I like the sound of your voice. And it's like, see how it's done? You know, like, <laughs> yeah, I know, he didn't do I know. anything. It's see like, how it's done. And it's like, oh, you got to fire him. He's like, well, it's a million dollar sale, Dwight. I mean, it's just like, it's so hypothetical. And you're just, I know. Oh my god. I don't also if that I got to feel like that was improv or something yeah. cuz could you imagine writing butt liquor <laughs> on a script and just thinking this is gold? <laughs> uh-huh. I don't know it worked. <laughs> oh um, my god. I mean, it would be no surprise if we're talking about favorite characters. I mean, it's probably cliche to say it, but I got it. Michael Scott. Yeah, oh my of god. course. He's the mm. best. And that's 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 mine. I'm assuming Kyle. Do you have a different one or? I, uh, no, <laughs> he he is what makes the show. I mean, I think you'll probably talk about it later. But uh, I mean, that's where the problems kind of yeah. started to fall off the rails when uh, definitely he left, definitely you know? fell so, off the rails there. So yeah, no, he holds that whole whole show together. He's just it, he's ridiculous. He's the the character he created and they created for him is just fantastic it here's a prison mike crime steve carell never won an emmy that's for insane Michael Scott. that is insane yep i mean he it, i looked up who he lost to he lost to tony shalhoub for monk ricky gervais for extras alec baldwin twice for 30 rock and then jim parsons twice uh for big bang theory God, never for Steve Carell. There's no love in there for Steve Carell. Yeah, and and yet the the show went just down downhill after he left. I mean, I feel like there were so many mistakes when it came to casting, when it came to story. Uh, I'm gonna dive into it a little bit. It's gonna be the negative part of this celebration of the office. But you know, first they have the search for the new boss, and for so long they avoided casting big names on the show they made this rule to themselves that you know they don't want to pull from this documentary of having these a-list stars come even when they did their super bowl episode in season five their guest casting of jack black and all them they made them like in a movie that the cast saw in the break room on their computer they Mm. never like entered 
Dunder Mifflin. Like, uh-huh. And you get this new uh, owner here, uh, Joe Bennett, Kathy Bates. She's this strong, no-nonsense woman from Tallahassee, uh, and she's the CEO. But then in the manager search, they find James Spader's Robert California. And that's, and that's where we get to season eight and season eight started. And I'm sure it was some kind of like actor scheduling issue with Kathy Bates, but they pretty much tell us first episode of season eight, after they just made Kathy Bates, the new CEO, that Robert California goes down to Florida to convince Joe to give up her job as CEO so that he could run the company. It's like, (laughs) what? What? It's like, it's supposed to be like, yeah, Jim even mentions this. It's just like, what? Isn't this crazy? It's like, yeah, this is so like cartoony. It's so unbelievable. <laughs> Why would she give up her own company as CEO? Yeah. When she's this strong, like no nonsense CEO that gets things done. It's like, no, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Take, take my company. Just whatever. Like, yeah, that yeah, I'm makes sure no it was just sense. A, an acting thing. But then uh, you have that he's, you know, those two big names are introduced. And then Andy ends up becoming the new manager, the new boss mm-hmm. of Dunder, Mitten, Dunder Mifflin Scranton. And I feel like they don't know what to do with him. They morphed him into like a Michael Scott 2.0. And then they like reverse engineer him to be like the meaner Michael of season one by the end of season nine. Mm. His character was always all over the place when he's introduced um, – you know, in season three, he's this one person, and then he becomes this another person. And I'm sure they started writing to Ed Helms and the hangover actor. Yeah. And then, you know, and then season eight, season nine is when he became the hangover star. Mm-hmm. So it's like, well, yeah, let's make him the manager because he's the new star yeah. of the show. And I just feel like they tried so hard to make him something he's not, and it just never quite fit in the in the world of the show and yeah i'm watching season eight now and it's 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 just it's hard it's hard really to it's not it's not good well yeah that's kind of why i (laughs) i didn't never tapped into those episodes is because i heard such bad things about it it's like i don't want to sour this this good relationship i have with the office for mediocre television that feels like homework you know what i mean yeah and the, the final season, man, it, it, it really did annoy me where he, so uh, Ed Helms is busy with the hangover three and they are shooting it during season nine of the office, the final season. So they put him on like this boat trip for most of the season. He's gone. He's not there. And before this, they built up this whole thing with Andy and Aaron as the new Jim and Pam. They're the new couple because Jim and Pam are now married and with kids and they're happily in love. But once like, he kind of starts coming back from the boat trip. He almost becomes like the Roy in this Jim and Pam mm. triangle because they make this guy named Pete, who's new in season nine, or he's called Plop. Uh, that was his nickname around the office as the new Jim. So it's kind of like, you know, Andy's like this, this Roy character. Now he, he didn't contact his girlfriend during this trip of Aaron. Mm-hmm. Uh, he comes back and he's expecting a bonus because the, the branch is doing so well. It's like, dude, you weren't even here. What are you doing? And he expects everything to be fine with Aaron. Yeah, obviously, they're not going to be because you didn't talk to your girlfriend for yeah. <laughs> months. Yeah. And I'm just like surprised because as this character, he dealt with this with Gabe. He lost Aaron to Gabe in like season seven or whatever. And and he just didn't learn the lesson there. And I just, I don't know if it's almost like the the writers of the office are like, you know what? You're leaving us after we just promoted you as manager here to go do your hangover movies. We're going to write your character into a pretty negative person because he yeah. does not come out good at the end of the show. Mm. But Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting to see what's behind the scenes. Have you seen any of the uh, like the blooper reels with them behind the like them doing like the conference videos together oh. or the like the conference tape? Like when they're the doing like stuff. improv stuff, like when they're just like messing with each other and bloopers and they can't, uh, they keep breaking. Oh man, it's hilarious. Even in that, that butt liquor uh, yeah. bit 
there. Um, you can see uh, Rain Wilson like holding his yeah. mouth, trying not to laugh. I don't know how they could do it. I mean, yeah. having yeah Steve Carell at the the front of the conference room doing anything, doing his characters. I would yeah. I, easily break every single time. Yeah, uh, a legend there. Any other any any? Because we talk about favorite characters. Any one that you you know well, least I, favorite? Anything that well, didn't work for you with the show? I don't have like least favorite, but I have like a lot of the office characters because I thought like Michael was such like the 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 one that was out and like really in your face um and like the other characters i feel like didn't get a lot of love and i think mm -hmm. for me early on i was like what's mindy kaling's character doing because yeah. she gets like zero love early on i was surprised she made it you know what i mean it's like a prospect you're like how did she make it that far i think it was just because she was a writer same with yeah. same with bj novak who yeah. plays ryan yeah he his whole career character arc is just a huge question mark yeah I mean, obviously he starts as a temp and then he becomes like prim i can't remember whatever executive position he got with dunder mifflin but he goes to new york city and then all of a sudden he you know uh, gets involved with drugs and insider trading and fraud or whatever and then he is nobody and then he rises back up through the company again and then he becomes like this mark zuckerberg like app wannabe with the glass like I all like over the place every season he was a new persona yeah we weren't suspenders one season it's just like you know <laughs> yeah. that was like his character trait and it was just yeah. like what are we doing what are we doing here yeah. with him but i will say when it was all said and done i think the, the finale is actually very strong those last two or three episodes of season nine when they're wrapping things up you, you start feeling it again they, they pay off the stuff with the documentary we get the the wedding of Dwight and Angela, and then you get the surprise appearance uh, from Steve Carell. Michael Scott comes back in a brief cameo, but it was just enough, just enough mm -hmm. uh, for there to wrap everything up. And yeah, in the end, happy ending. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I, I like the office. I, I should really go back through and watch it fully. But like I said, I'm like John, I like to watch new things. I was watching new things. Well, I don't know. We talked about uh happy series finale i think it's safe to say that that's not this the yeah <laughs> the same for the next show we're gonna be talking about yeah how i met your mother uh premiered september 19th 2005 and this is a sitcom created by craig thomas and carter bays and it tells the story of ted mosby and his friends living in new york city through the framing device of ted from 2030 recounting to his son and daughter how he met their mother the series ran for over 208 episodes until March 31st, 2014. It won 10 Emmys in the technical categories, but was nominated for Outstanding Comedy Series in 2009. All right, Kyle, start me off. How I Met Your Mother. Thoughts of the Thoughts? show? Thoughts? Oh, man. Um, Broad strokes. <laughs> Uh, well, it was one of my favorite, favorite shows back in the day. And early on, just like The Office, it, it, this show, I feel like was so good, especially for that time period. Like there's no way like half of the episodes would be able to be shown now, like like in the Me Too era and stuff there's like a, that. We're going to definitely talk about that. Most of How I Met Your Mother, even though it's only been 15 years, <laughs> does not hold up. It does yeah. not hold up. No, it doesn't hold up at all. But I, I mean, I still like to go back and watch episodes of it because it's just so absurd. It's absurd. And they build a good cast of characters where like The Office, I felt like had this an abundance of characters with like very little time to spend on each one. So it's like, I feel like some of them get lost. I feel like they had a core group. It was easy to follow along. Uh, uh, Neil Patrick Harris does, plays that character. Fantastic. I mean, they, I'm pretty sure they hired him in that role after seeing him in um, Harold and Kumar go to white castle. Cause he's oh. basically playing the same character. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I like how I met your mother. They had some hiccups and the storyline goes off the rails later on in seasons, but yeah. it's still, it's still to me has some really, really great episodes. 
Yeah. So, John, I know you weren't as connected with How I Met Your Mother. I don't know if you ever started it. What happened? It just kind of fell by the wayside for you. Like, what didn't hook you into the show? Yeah, I don't I don't know the whole. Maybe it was part of the whole marketing thing where like. What's his name? Uh, Barney, the main character, is it? It's just like. He's, well, he's a side character. Ted Mosby, Josh Radner is the, the main character of the show. He's the oh, interesting. father well, in this. Uh, it just seemed a little too in your face for what I kind of wanted to watch, I guess, maybe. I don't know. I, I, I It didn't... Nothing about it ever made me say, oh, I should watch that. I, I've heard good things. I mean, it's not like I've heard bad things, but it's just uh, none of the media that I saw made me be like, oh, yeah, let me go watch that, you know? So I... I, I mm, eh. Yeah. No, I... I, I hear you. Um, I, I would build this as like a, a comedic lost in a way because there was obviously a mystery throughout the whole show and there was a bunch of flashbacks. It was known for its flashbacks, flash forwards. It was mm. it was moving around in, in time all the time, showing all these characters and how they met each other and this incident they had back in the day in college or mm. whatever. It was it jumped around a lot. I was also into this as well. I didn't have many channels growing up. CBS was one of them. And I, I, I got into this show. Um, mm -hmm. I think it was a, the right time period in yep. those early seasons. I have to say, just like The Office, super strong season two. When I was looking mm -hmm. up episodes, mm -hmm. season two is another just home run after home run. I'm going to name a few episodes here. Uh, you have Showdown, which is the episode where Barney goes on The Price is Right because he thinks his dad is Bob Barker. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You have Swarly, which is the yes. episode that gives him his nickname and also the crazy eyes. Yes. Um, Marshall and Lily's Wedding. You have the, the 500 Miles Road Trip flashback oh song God. that I tortured Kyle with on our own road trip. <laughs> but my winner for favorite episode... I think maybe the best episode of the show, I think, if you got to pick one, I would say is Slap Bet. Yep. Uh, is that, I don't know if that's on your list. Oh, yeah, of course. Of okay. course. But Slap Bet, obviously, you have the creation of this bet between Marshall and Barney, but you also get the big reveal that Robin is actually Robin Sparkles. And uh -huh. then you get the whole let's go to the mall. So you have, like, two things that lasted throughout the entire series, all in one season two episode here. Yeah, yep. Yeah, any other favorite moments or episodes for you, Kyle? Um, I have uh Slaps Giving. So yeah, that's a good one, along yeah. with the slap bet, but um there's one I can't I couldn't remember the the name of it and I couldn't find it. Um, but I remember what it was when Barney's or is it Barney or um shoot. Uh, uh, Jason yeah, Marshall, Siegel's character. Legal, Marshall. Yeah, there's yeah so Mar when Marshall's trying to find the best burger in town. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's that's a good like, episode Regis to Bilman me. Regis Feldman guest stars in that one. Be one of the funniest moments from that episode that still makes me die laughing because it's just uh, the way he goes about it. Um, a bar <laughs> they think they've found the best burger and I think Barney's about to eat it. And... and <laughs> Jason Siegel just comes over and smacks it right, right out. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, so that episode, Perfect Week. Yeah. Remember that? I believe so. Remind me. So uh, that's when Barney's trying to go for oh, like, yeah. that's what I like thought. <laughs> perfect week. Like, yeah, yeah. that's a great. Um, the Naked Man episode. Well, yeah. I got to bring up, well, that's one of the things that well, I don't think hold up anymore. <laughs> oh yeah, no, but it's still fantastic. It's still hilarious. Yeah. yeah, I would say so. Like when I was coming up with like my favorite character of the show, this was a little bit tougher for me because back in the day, I definitely would have said Barney. Back in the day, he's the the Kramer of yeah. How I Met Your Mother. Mm -hmm. Um, I also I saw a lot of similarities between me and Ted. Just like you know, you know, back in the day, looking for the dream girl. Everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. Just that whole like kind of story he was going on. That being said, I mean, neither look great, you know, thinking back. Uh, I got some yeah. things here about Barney here. Obviously, does not treat uh, women well. And um, <laughs> that's one way to put it. Yeah. You got that playbook to ma manipulate women into having sex. You have all of his numbers and checklists he likes to have. 
Uh, He's tricking drunk girls into having sex with him. He refers yeah. to them as skanks. But then <laughs> there's one moment that I completely forgot about that, like BuzzFeed, I think, lists here. There's like a, a mention at one point that he believes he's like sold a woman. And it's just like, that's kind of like glossed over. He's like, yeah, I, I shake some guy's hand. He gave me the car keys and then I never saw her again. It's like, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, you could not make this show in this in this era, man. And then and then Ted, you know, okay, Ted's our main character here. You know, he, he doesn't really take no for an answer. He's all about himself. Uh he, he broke up with the same girl twice on her birthday over voicemail. He cheated mm -hmm. on Victoria with Robin, mm -hmm. but then also later convinced Victoria to leave her own wedding, even though he was devastated. When he was also left at the altar. Yeah. No, he, made, he made Robin. I'm not done. <laughs> he made Robin get rid of her dogs that were from exes. But then he also made a huge romantic gesture with with uh, with Robin's locket. Moments before he she was about to marry his best friend. Mm -hmm. Plus, he robs the French horn multiple times from a restaurant just to, for this romantic gesture. Uh Oh, it's it's all for romance, but it's also you're 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 stealing something from this restaurant, you know? Yeah. Um I I think we can all agree. I think even watching the show, people knew Barney was a terrible per like he was a terrible yeah. person. He was a terrible but Ted gets a pass because it's like under the guise of you know Love. that he's like a uh, hopeless romantic and he just he wants to find the girl, but the Ted Mosby sucked. Ted, <laughs> Ted was a terrible character. He's probably the worst one. I think there's an ep or an episode where like Ted Mosby's girlfriends make a website where it's like tedmosbysucks.com or something. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was a web and then they made it like a real website um, for people to you know sure. like a tie in with the show. Any any other things with the characters of of the show? I mean, we talked about two of the main five here. Anyone else that stuck out? Anything? Um, I think, I think the one that kind of didn't fit in at first was Kobe Smolder's character because you're like, how is this going to work out? But then it, it ended up it ended up working out, and she had Robin Sparkles, which I mean, I think that's probably one of the most famous things from yeah. the show. Uh, so uh, that worked out. Um, but yeah, no, Ted, Ted was the worst to me was the worst character. Um, Marshall and Lily that I just felt like they were good side characters to everything. They had some good storylines too, but to me, it was like and Barney never, and Ted and what are they going to get up to kind of thing. I never really got with Lily. I never like L Lily just annoyed me a lot. I don't know if it's an Allison Hannigan thing. <laughs> But Lily Maybe. annoyed me, and especially in the first season or two. I can't remember the specifics here. But I believe she's engaged to Marshall and then pretty much just, like, runs off to California because yep. it's like, oh, well, you're not going to tell him at least, you know, like, yep. okay, you're going to end that. Uh, but and there's, like, a whole thing with, like, her credit card debt, and I think, like, she, like, blames it on him. or like, I can't remember the specifics, but, like, mm -hmm. it's like Seinfeld. None of these people are great, actually, at the end of yeah. the day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I want to talk about the series finale. I got quite a bit to say here. Aired uh, March 31st. It was not well received, I think, across the board. Uh, I saw some things when I was looking things up, uh, some different headlines. Uh, Wikipedia, they, they mentioned many thought it was an early April Fool's Day joke because it was the night before. Uh, USA Today actually named it the worst finale of all time. Woo. We actually discussed it in episode 55. And I actually listened back to it last night just to like, what did I think the day after this aired? And by the sound of it, I didn't hate the finale too much. I didn't hate the specifics of the finale. I think I was more mad about the lead up season yeah. to it. Yeah. And what that meant for the show overall. To kind of ref refresh people's memories here. The final season took place within this 48 hour span leading up to Robin and Barney's wedding. And they spent 22 episodes telling us that Barney has grown, he's changed, you know, and this is something we're going to have to deal with. It's Robin and Barney, deal with it. These two yeah. are getting together. And then the finale starts, and we jump forward three years, and they're divorced. Back to normal Barney. It's just, 
why do you well, waste yeah. an entire season on this? Yep. 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 Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Big problem. Big yeah. problems. Yeah. I just feel like this was like this moment where it's like the writers, yeah, for 22 out of 24 episodes said, this is happening. This is what we're doing. We're focusing in on this. Mm. And then they're like, you know what? Just kidding. We're doing this instead. Yeah. And well, it was whiplash. Yeah. Well, the, the problem comes with when you have a definitive end to a series that's, you know, predetermined and then you're writing to that and then your characters are growing, but then you've got a pigeonhole into, it's just like, there's something about uh, an end goal in mind, but if you're the evolution of the writing and the characters is going away from that end goal, then you got to switch it. And it, yep. the way it was set up was it wasn't, it didn't allow for them to switch it up or they needed a better plan to maneuver yeah. back into what their original goal was bingo and that's almost exactly what i said on the podcast way back when was they were trying to make a, a this these pieces to a puzzle fit that don't fit and they were cramming it in there just because they had this thing left over mm -hmm. and you got to go along with your characters that you've had for nine years because supposedly i believe season eight was supposed to be the last season but then cbs wanted an extra season nine so that's maybe where that came from but they, they can't complain too much because one of the things that they did was they shot way back in 2006 with the kids. They mm -hmm. revealed to the kids, yeah, it's, it's you know, spoiler, Aunt Robin, it, you mm -hmm. know, and they had this whole moment and it's like, well, that doesn't work now. It might have worked in 2006 when you were writing. Yeah. But you changed everything here. You didn't yep. see where the characters were going and you actually cast someone that was perfect. You found the perfect woman for Ted and Kristen yep. Milotti. Yep. She, was, she was perfect and then you kill her off and this is the thing that was crazy to me when I, I actually rewatched the finale they kill the mother six minutes from the end of the episode you're almost done with the episode and it's six minutes until the end it's the final three minutes we get the exchange about uh, it's okay to date Aunt Robin and I have that clip uh, and we're going to play it this is the final three minutes of the finale they play this and that, kids, is how I met your mother. That's it. That's it. No, I don't buy it. That is not the reason you made us listen to this. Oh, really? And what's the reason? Let's look at the facts here. You made us sit down and listen to the story about how you met Mom, yet Mom is hardly in the story. No, this is a story about how you're totally in love with Aunt Robin. And you're thinking about asking her out, and you want to know if we're okay with it. I can't believe this. I kept this story short and to the point, and you guys still missed it. The point of the story is that... Is that you totally, totally, totally have the hots for Aunt Robin. No. Yeah, so even, like, even her is, like, the audience is, like, that's it? That's the story? <laughs> the mom's not even in the story. You, you like Robin. <laughs> like, yeah. even she's, like, the audience uh for us here uh, what mm. do you think about the ending kyle yeah i mean i, I just kind of voiced uh it earlier in that, that i think it was the characters are going one way and then they pull the switcheroo i mean i don't i don't i don't uh, think they i don't know i don't think that's what they intended to do and i don't know how i don't know like, I, I think it would be more fine with it if like yeah okay date aunt robin marry her i don't care but like don't do it in the last six minutes of the finale when we yeah. spent the entire season doing this wedding. Yeah. You know, this, the beginning of the season could have been, you know, there was clues along the way that something might've happened to the mother, but like to do it in the last few minutes of the finale was, yeah. it was just not, didn't work. Espe especially when she was like, like you said, this perfect person. And then we see the problem is we see Robin and Ted's, problems up until then and then suddenly you know it could be two people in love but they they're not right for each other yeah uh i do want to nitpick real quick on like the the kind of framing device of this show because obviously he's telling yeah. his story to his kids and he cleans up a lot of it with the the with pot 
actually being sandwiches. They're yeah, always yeah. holding a sandwich instead of yeah. something else. But then if you stop and think about it, he tells his kids every single hookup <laughs> him <laughs> and his like aunt and uncles, quote unquote, yeah. had before they met his mom. It's like, oh, I, I, I slept with her. I dated uh, her. Oh, Barney. He, she was this person. Yeah. Oh, uh, Lily cheated on. It's just like, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I know. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. It is, it is a weird way to, for a second, I thought you were about to go <laughs> different type of framing. And I thought production wise, there's been a couple times watching back where they're supposed to be like uh, either in the middle booth and then there'll somehow be like a wall next to them or yeah, vice versa. Right there, yeah. There's a wall and then they're like a wide shot of them in the center. I'm like, this isn't working right now. And I don't know why no one caught that or if it wasn't a big deal at the time, but on rewatch, it's like production. You could see a lot of that. Yeah. There's also uh, two, uh, there are two yeah. other things that I want to mention yeah. uh, that I really like. Cause I forgot uh, porn star, Ted Mosby. Okay. Yeah. You remember yeah, they all, when, they're, they're doppelgangers. They yeah. All had their yep. different versions. Yeah. Yeah. So porn star, Ted Mosby, that was good. And then the crazy hot scale. Yeah, yep. Yeah. That, <laughs> oh man. They always had their little like yeah, things like with the the crazy eyes or like the yeah. their oh moment where it's like they tell them something and it's like oh the glass like, the glass like, shattering moment. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. So yeah. they had their little like Seinfeld -y, like names for things. Yeah. Um uh there was gonna be some spin-offs. Um one of them is is crazy to me if you think about it. There was How I Met Your Dad, and it would have starred Greta Gerwig and was narrated by Meg Ryan. They what? actually shot this pilot. They shot it, but the creators refused to reshoot the stuff that CBS wanted, so CBS ended up passing. But like, if you think about this here, I actually looked up the cast, and it's like all these people you would recognize now. Yeah. It was um, – actually, it's actually it's Hunter from The Office, but he's more known from like Masters of Sex and I believe um, Trial and Error. But um, – he was okay, in it. Yeah, yeah, uh, Carrie Dubeck from uh, the other two was in it. Uh, the guy that's <laughs> his redheaded friend on Dave was in it. Plus Greta Gerwig and Meg Ryan. Like we wouldn't have Lady Bird because she's yeah, been stuck doing I this know. for nine years. I know that's pretty crazy when you think about it. Yeah, Probably a uh, blessing in disguise. Yeah. And then that that didn't work out. So then they tried to develop How I Met Your Father, and that was with some new producers. And this is us, uh, Dan Fogelman. Um, that didn't work as well. So they keep trying at this. I don't think they could do it now because of how they ended the series because you're going to get to the point, the first, like, press panel, they're going to be like, oh, so is, is the dad dead? Is uh, is he gonna is she going to marry her best friend that we meet in the first episode that's Uncle Dan or whatever? Like, yeah. It, it, what they needed to do was almost do it from Kristen Malati's perspective. They did one episode where it was like how the mother met me. Mm -hmm. And that could have been the show. They could have had Kristen Malati and her friends and kind of said, like, the other side of things, the better call Saul, other yeah. side of things, the Breaking uh -huh. Bad. But yeah, nope. Because, yeah, because they, they, they kept bringing up the yellow umbrella and all those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But, yeah, so – uh, I, we're a little more hard on how I met your mother. I think tonight we're celebrating the 15th anniversary, but yeah, I just think I was so into it. And I, I don't know if it, it holds up as well. Yeah, anymore. no, it just, I, I don't think it does. I don't think it does as well as the office. The office yeah. is, I feel like a timeless thing. And, uh, and I think it's going to be situations that people are in like, uh, like all the time like you're you're gonna meet all those kinds of characters whether you're working or, or whatever but how i met your mother it just feels like it's it's kind of uh in a time capsule and stuck in that era and it it's good to rewatch it because you you like you remember the 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 good times or like the the things that make it great but it definitely if you were to show this to maybe like a kid going yeah, in I wonder uh, high, yeah. high school or college and maybe like two or three, four or five years, maybe even now, it would be like totally different viewpoints on like what's going on there. Definitely. I don't know. 
Well, that's that's all we got for tonight. Unless you want to talk about Grey's Anatomy, I don't I don't know anything about the 15 year anniversary of Grey's Anatomy. There is uh, one episode of Grey's nah, Anatomy. Come on, get out of here. No. I'm just... <laughs> all right. Next week, next week on the podcast, we got some series premieres to talk about. Hollywood and Upload, they're both on streaming services. One's on Netflix, one's on Amazon. And we have a lot more coming up in May for premieres. We have The Eddie, I Know This Much Is True, Snowpiercer, Space Force with The Office star Steve Carell. So a lot to talk about. Uh, you can find episodes of the podcast on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, the blog, doerdonsey.com. We are live Tuesday nights on Twitch twitch.tv slash do or don't see and of course follow us on facebook and on twitter i gotta thank both of you guys for joining me tonight reminiscing about these shows from 15 years ago couldn't do without you yeah dude all right until next time i'm david allen i'm john berwick and i'm cobberger and that's all we got for do or don't see goodbye everybody <laughs>